Welcome, welcome. Those of you that are getting some of our wonderful uh, Tanzanian refreshments, please continue to do so. And those of you, if you want to grab some while they're warm, please do that too. Um, I'm Joanne Abel, the Humanities Programming Coordinator, and we're always so happy when you choose to spend your uh, weekend day with us, especially when the sun just came out. So um, those of you that have been to these before know we always give a quick commercial for the Durham Library Foundation that makes all of these events possible. The Library um, Foundation is in a campaign. We're over halfway there. We're raising $1.5 million to make the margin of excellence for the public library. And we say it takes people of all stripes to make a great library. So earn your stripes and grab a brochure and learn about what's happening. Um, I hope all of you have your um, brochure with the November uh, programs and ready to flip it. But before you flip to December, we've added a very, very special program s Monday night here at 7. Earlier this month, we got a call from Man Bites Dog Theater, and they are going to be doing the first full-length production of The Best of Enemies. That's the story of C.P. Ellis, who was a Grand Dragon or some Pooh Bear with the Klan, and Ann Atwater, who is an amazing, she still is living today, community organizers. I don't know if Ann is going to be able to come because of health concerns, but C.P. Ellis' son is going to be there. We're going to have the actors um, from Man Bites Dog and the director coming and talking about the theater, and they're going to do a little snippet of the play, and it's an amazing play. Um, did any of you all see it at Haytai when they did the uh, Reader's Theater maybe two months ago? It was really wonderful, and I can imagine what the full-blown production will be. It will run from December the 5th to the 21st, and the 5th, I think that's that Saturday, will be a benefit for Anne. So this will be its just an amazing Durham story, um, and I hope all of you can come both Monday night to hear the actors and the directors talk, but also to Man Bites Dog in December and see the play. This is our last of the Sister City programs. Um, we've really, really enjoyed them, and I think you're going to enjoy this one. I do hope you walk around and look at all the posters that we have around. Um, this was kind of a chaotic program. When we got here, I said, where's all my easels? And the health department is opening today, and they borrowed all the library's easels. So I really appreciate all the Sister Cities folks and being flexible in making this work. Um, I, I would like to now introduce where, where, Victoria Thomas. I'm Thornton, who has lived in Durham for over 12 years, having moved here from the Washington, D.C. area. She is the co-chair of the Arusha Committee of Sister Cities of Durham and has worked with the committee for several years in assisting relationships between Arusha, Tanzania, and Durham, North Carolina. She's going to give us a little bit on the background of the project that's being presented today. Welcome with me, Ms. Thornton. Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure to have you here. I'd like you all to meet my committee members who are here, my co-chair, uh, Gwen Bookman, at the back, Tony, hold on, Nitru Galegua, who was kind enough to provide us with the assortment of Tanzanian foods and T, uh, Eve Marion, where are you, at the very back, uh, who's also on the board of the library here. Um, who else from the committee is here? Marjorie Freeman, who has been here for with the committee for ages. Julia Williams Davis, who is also one of our committee members. Are there any other committee members here? So we have worked in conjunction with Arusha, Tanzania for several years now. In fact, uh, one of our founding members, Dorothy Borden, uh, who is the founder of Sister Cities of Durham, just wrote up a history that will be appearing soon in the Herald Sun. It will be one of the Sunday editions. But uh, Sister Cities of Durham is an organization that strives to promote peace through mutual respect, understanding, and cooperation, one individual, one community at a time. So at some point, um, the city of Durham decided that they wanted to link with other cities. And so we now have five sister cities, Arusha, Tanzania, Durham, the United Kingdom, 
Kostroma, Russia. Kunsha, China is our newest city. It's actually a friendship city and we'll work towards establishing a formal sister cities agreement with them. Toyama, Japan, and our very newest sister city, Zuzo, China. Um, we encourage you to find out more about our organization. We're on Facebook, so you can like us. We also have a website, www.sistercities-durham.nc.gov. So uh, I'd like to tell you how we came about working with the Duke Center for Documentary Studies. We wanted to find ways to have better cultural exchanges. And uh, the Duke Center for Documentary Studies was looking at doing a program using photography as a way to bring people closer together. At the same time, I was part of another organization, the Durham chapter of the Lynx Incorporated, and we were looking to work with other groups to promote world peace, and we linked up with Sister Cities of Durham. Well, in 2007, we were able to organize, along with the Center for Documentary Studies, a trip where some of my medical cohorts took disposable cameras over for the students and the teachers. And what you're seeing around uh, the walls here are photos taken by the students talking about where they live, talking about things in their own environment, and then writing a paragraph about their perceptions of the photos that they took. Some of the teachers also took photographs and they used them uh, to help in their lesson planning. Um, and it just became a wonderful project and we're so glad that it has survived up until now. And without further ado, I'd like to bring up Katie Hyde from the Duke Center for uh, photograph for Documentary Studies so she can tell you more about learning through photography. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Um, and thank you again to Sister Cities for um, supporting this program and helping us get off the ground. Um, adjust this a little bit. Can you hear me? I'm going to um, do a few. I'm going to share with you a few things. One is this PowerPoint that will give you um, a sense of the process of literacy through photography. And so um, I've been. I've just come in May. I was in Tanzania for the seventh time. So this this project um, is something I've been really involved with for the for the last seven years. And so I want to show you a little bit about the history of the project and also what we're doing now. Share with you some of the students' work. I'm going to show two very short videos that are about two minutes long so you can see the process a little bit and also just at the end during a giving you time for questions and answers I'm going to have a slideshow playing with more examples of students work so you have some on display here but I have an archive of about 5,000 images in it that um, at least so we couldn't put those all on display um, as printed versions so let me just get started with this this slideshow here. Um, just first of all, some of the goals of, of learning through photography or literacy through photography. It's one of the most important things about the method is that it's a very student-centered method. And so it has um, students getting out of the classroom, coming up with their own way of understanding the curriculum that they're, they're studying, making connections um, to their own lives, so how, understanding how what they're learning about in school is relevant to their own lives and, and to you know Tanzanian history and to, to Tanzanian culture. Critical thinking is a really important part of it too. Just, just like in the United States, there's a lot of memorizing that happens in Tanzania in the school system. Lots of focus on standardized tests. And so we, we hope that through um, the process of making pictures and again getting outside of the classroom, learning from each other, learning from peers, students are able to think more deeply and think critically. This is a typical um, school in Tanzania. Um, a lot of times they have very beautiful paintings on the outside of the school. 
but inside the classrooms they don't have visual aids on the walls and and often there's a really a limitation of of textbooks um it might happen that there's one textbook that gets passed around one by one to 40 60 100 students and so um being able to to introduce this program with photography part of it is about the process of making pictures and what you can learn through that process but it's also about producing visual aids that can be used um, in the teaching so posters that are put on the walls um, and little you know note cards of with photographs that can be passed around the room so basically addressing some of the needs of needing to needing more visual materials but also um, as a whole, the country is really geared more towards moving away from the traditional style of teaching of rote learning to more hands-on educational styles. Um, I was thinking I was going to be looking at my computer, so um, let me read what, what's up here. I really thought this was an important articulation of what LTP had to offer, not just in Tanzania, but I think um, in general as a teaching methodology. It's been around in Durham for 25 years. Um, this year, I've, I'll be going to Rwanda. I've been to three other countries over the course of the year sharing this methodology with teachers. So it's really a global pr program, and I think that this um, quotation really speaks well to the, the power of the methodology. Um, one of the, the I'll, I'll let you read it yourselves, but one of, the, um, one of our collaborators in Tanzania who's the head of all the primary education in um, in one of the regions near Arusha is the one that shared these thoughts with us about how LTP really is linked to deep thinking and moving away from the sort of multiple choice way of thinking about um, learning. So in other words, there isn't always a right answer. <laughs> there are many possible answers to problems and, and actually a lot of learning is through problem solving. So I want to show you a little bit about how this all started. So um, we did make our first trip to Tanzania, myself and Wendy Ewald, who's the founder of Literacy Through Photography, in 2007. But actually before that, in 2004, um, Sister Cities supported um, teachers from not just Arusha, Tanzania, but also from Durham, England, one of the other sister cities, to come to a Literacy Through Photography program here in Durham. So Margaret, as who you see there um, on the right of the image, was one of two teachers that, that was supported by Sister Cities to come to a training here. Um, along with, with Margaret was Paley Shaibu, who you see standing up um, at that table there. He, he um, in particular, was really interested in bringing this back to other teachers in Tanzania, and not just doing the program with kids, but involving as many teachers as he could possibly get to, to listen to him talking about the methodology. Um, so he started doing trainings and he really um, was committed to the idea of Wendy and I coming there to provide this training and so three years later we were able to to do that with the funding from Sister Cities and from, from Duke. And so since then um, Pele has been really involved in this project year round. Um, here he's talking with um, several of the administrators in that are overseeing all of education in Arusha and so he's sharing with them some posters that have been made in classrooms and by teachers to advocate for the program and to continue our efforts to basically have the administration of the Arusha um, city accept, it, ex accept LTP as part of the curriculum there in the in the city. Um, and here, I love this one too, because here he is giving his LTP pep talk to kids too. So he's always giving a, a pep talk to teachers at the end of our workshops, you know, about how important this is and how they can do it and encouraging them to try something new. But here he is also um, telling kids the same idea. So these kids um, are at a school called the Huru, the same one that had the colorful um, visual aids on the front of it. So basically what we do um, when we're able to, to be there in Tanzania, we do start with, with teachers. We start by offering LTP training to teachers and the training is very hands-on. The teachers are learning about photography and how to connect it to writing and how to integrate photography into the, the subjects that they're already teaching and learning about. 
in the schools. Um, and so often when I'm there, I have a team of Duke students with me. And so I'm kind of picking up on the funding that sister cities had provided for our initial trip there. Um, we are lucky to have the, the timing is such that a, a big initiative at Duke started at the same time called Duke Engage. And it's a civic engagement project that, that sponsors fellowships for students to do a summer project in Durham or in many places in the world. And so I've been leading a program in Tanzania and I usually have a team of eight Duke students with me and we spend two months there um, doing lots of teacher trainings. We've trained hundreds of teachers. We've worked with thousands of, of kids. And so we've been able to involve a lot of people in the program. So here you see some of my different students um, working with teachers. Um, so the second part of our training usually involves working within the schools. And so we train the teachers in the methodology and then support them as they're um, trying out this different methodology. Um, and so the next set of pictures is from that. And if it's okay, I'd like to interrupt to show you two short videos. So thank you, Joanne, for helping me with this. I'd like to show you, these are just about two minute videos that show you the kids and teachers in action. So I think you'll have a better idea of what this is all about seeing them. And then just um, do the one in the top right corner. I mean, sorry, yeah, the, the, the right. If it, if it just hovers there, I think it'll pop up. Um, here, let me, that's okay. Shalom, 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 bote wote na wakini. Kupiga picha, baada ya kuwanda picha yake, anayotaka kupigia, manafunzi sasa atachukua kamera, na kwenda kupiga picha ya kitu hicho na baada ya hapo atachagua picha ambayo atazitumia kutengeneza bango kwa ajili ya maonyesho Just click on the video too, it should be fine now. Baada ya kupigia picha hizo na kuchagua picha ambazo ni nzuri na kuzipendeza, Mwanafunzi atazikusanya kwa ajili ya kutengeneza chati ambayo anaweza kuiandika darasani. 
baada ya kumaliza chati zile nzuri zitatumika kwenye maonyesho hii itaongeza ujuzi wa mwanafunzi katika kujieleza kwa kutumia chati yake mwenyewe example here we have written adaptation of the environment especially when it is forested area and this is the turtles over here and here it was there are, there are no trees or tall grass in this particular area when it senses uh, any danger it has to use its own means to protect itself Just go back to the PowerPoint, that'd be great. Thanks. Ya kuanda picha yake, anayotaka kupigia, manafunzi sasa atachukua kamera na kuenda kupigia picha. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I think you can tell a little bit more about the enthusiasm that, that comes with the process by looking at those videos. Um, in the first video where they were taking pictures, um, some of the pictures that the teachers and the kids were taking were about Swahili proverbs and that's a really fun project that you'll see in some of the examples that are on display over here. Um, so basically telling the story or the moral of a proverb through photographs. So the next few pictures here are, are showing um, my students in, in action teaching the, the children the photography. This is actually uh, the group in the green is a group that I worked with all summer in 2012 and also in 2011 and, and this past spring. Um, they're, they're basically being, they're, I'm, I've been training them to be student leaders in literacy through photography and so their, their book that they made is on the table back there along with a lot of other materials. So they called the book the, the LTP book of different skills and they call themselves the super nine heroes of LTP. Um, what one of the things that we did together is that the student that my group um, went to another school and taught kids at a, at another school, and so they taught the red group in the picture. And what was great is that that was actually a Swahili-based school that they taught at, and so I wasn't able to help much. <laughs> 
So it was great just to be able to step back and see how much they had learned and, and how well they did in these activities. So the, the, the remaining slides will just give you a sense of the versatility of the methodology. And so um, we often do start with self-portraits so that students can tell something about their own life, maybe who they, who they are, what their, what their favorite part of them is, the best part of them. The students make photographs about their dreams that they have at night. Um, but then we've also really, in Tanzania, used the, the program as a lab um, to see all the very interesting and different ways that LTP can be used in science classes and history classes and other language classes. So it's been a great place for me to learn much more about the methodology. These are other self-portraits. These are, this is a group of, of hearing impaired students that I've worked with a couple summers. And so they're acting out different signs because also there's a real lack of um, teaching aids for, for the hearing impaired students as well. In this example, um, in, in a high school class, the students, as their regular curricula, were learning about colonialism and um, the history of slavery in Tanzania and, and the different kinds of enslavement tactics that were used. And so they, they basically um, left the classroom and decided how to, to show some of these tactics. And then what was really powerful about the project was um, the writing that happened afterward. And so the writing that's in the middle that you can't read because it's so small um, is written from the perspective of, of a slave, of an enslaved person. And so the student was pretending to be one of the, um, one of the girls in the photograph. And so it was actually, it was one of her. So she, she basically took on that identity and wrote using the first person. And this is a good example of how a lot of these projects are about empathy and trying to take someone else's um, perspective and putting yourself in someone else's shoes. And so making the history much more personal and just un coming to new discoveries by just really trying to, to um, call upon your own empathy. The example with the um, distribution graft is a really f fun and interesting one where the students were really skilled at making um, calculations of the mean and median and mode in their statistics class but didn't really have any idea what the x-axis was and what the y-axis was and what it really, what the points in a, in a, um, in a graph really meant. And so we, we went outside and the students, after kind of shuffling around chaotically for a while, arrange themselves um, to show what the class data were for how many siblings the, the, the students had. And so the students on the far left had no siblings, one, two, three, et cetera. And then they calculated the information from the actual data in their class. So it was a perfect example of just learning by doing and learning how learning through visuals and learning the fact that this, these abstract, boring statistics um, principles do have some practical relevance. So we usually close the um, summer with a big exhibition Or we have makeshift ex exhibitions in schools, like as part of the end of the day, like kind of wrap up activities, like the picture in the, on the top.
So that those are those are the photographs. I think what what um, I'd like to do is just to see if people have questions and. While the questions are go are if anyone does have a question, I'll I'll just show some other images that'll just play on a slideshow. So I guess we'll have maybe a, a few lights, um, if all or nothing. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. You can still see the the images, um, but I don't want to. Um, we can multitask a little bit. Um, so does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Uh, so, Katie, how did you first get the idea to even start this project? Where, where did the seed germinate from? Of literacy through photography? Mm -hmm. um, well, it didn't come from me. It came from an um, artist and educator named Wendy Ewald. And she's been doing, um, working with the ideas for like 45 years all over the world. So um, I've been involved with the program in Durham for about 14 years. Um, it has many manifestations around the world, so it's actually just kind of a simple idea of, of using writing and photography together, but a really powerful one, and it's been used in many different ways and continues to be used. I mean, there are many um, photo projects around the world that aren't literacy through photography projects, but other projects with children. and. So yeah, it was, I mean, I didn't come up with the idea, but I really embraced it as soon as I found out about it. So other questions? by that one with the deaf students. Mm -hmm. I wondered how that how that worked with Yeah, them. it was really great for me because um, I, I'm just, I've always been interested in learning sign language and I haven't yet, but I, I mean, I learned a little bit there. Um, but it was great because there were, there were three languages being spoken. One was sign language, one was Swahili, and one was English. So, um, the teachers at that particular school, it's a wonderful staff. There are about 12 teachers on the staff. There's both a hearing section and a hearing impaired section. About 12 of the students um, speak sign language, and two of them are, are unable to hear at all. But many of the hearing teachers can, can sign as well. So they were, I'd, I'd done a workshop just for the teachers. And, but it worked so well with the students and they're, they're obviously visual, visually oriented since their language is visual and so it was really easy to work with them even though some of them read lips so they, if I spoke Swahili they'd be able to read lips but I don't speak Swahili unfortunately so um, they also, those students also made self portraits and so we did, we did exercises that were um, just kind of standard literacy through photography projects too. So your point about the the way that pictures do bring out people's stories and also their confidence, um, that's a really fundamental idea of LTP, especially in connecting it to writing, that um, having the picture that is of this familiar subject matter from your life, from the topics that you really care about, maybe your family, maybe your hobbies, something in your, your bedroom, Having the, that as the starting point for the writing gives much more confidence, and so, or just for speaking, if people want to speak their story. Mm -hmm. I just 
are these pictures um, used, uh, are these pictures kept and used over and again for, for different classes or are students able to take them home as um, their personal items? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. I, I just um, usually let that be up to the teacher. Um, so what, what I do is I scan the students' work, and so I have this digital archive, but some teachers want the kids to take the pictures home, and other teachers want to put it on a poster and leave it hanging at the school. So it, it, it depends, but both, both are possible. What kind of cameras do you use, and how many, how many students per camera? How many would you need for, say, a group of 100 students? <laughs> We need, we have very few cameras compared to the number of kids involved, so um, we use just simple po like point and shoot Kodak cameras. Um, th that's mostly what we've used for the digital cameras. We've also had a lot of film cameras donated from sister cities and from other, from students. Um, it's, it's just been easier lately to use the digital cameras and so it might be four or five cameras for a class of 60 or 70, so we really have to um, share the cameras. That's sort of also how it works in Durham. So uh, one of my friends is here, Denise um, Bain, I'm a, a, one of my colleagues, a, a Durham teacher, and so yeah, we have the same issues in, in Durham, but it's a little bit more amplified in Tanzania. So there's a teacher resource center there that we've um, been able to raise funds for and, and bring more equipment each time that we come and leave that there as like a lending library. Um, but it's, you know, we could always get by with more cameras. Did you bring the printer with you? Or was yeah, you yeah, we have printers there, but we brought them over and left them there. So, so you're able to just plug the camera into the printer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. I've been going to Tanzania as part of a oh, sort of a capacity building situation mm -hmm. and doing some some research on malaria and I was just amazed at how much I learned about cell phones and cameras. We have various ages on the study and so we have some younger adults and older adults too but and now you know we communicate by way of Facebook and I'm learning some Swahili idioms and all I didn't know if, and I, are these private schools? Um, we work at both private school and, and government schools. Um, what, when we're able to do the project over the summer, which is when Duke Engage funds it, um, a lot of the government schools are closed. Uh -huh. But like for example, where the, the hearing impaired program, that's a government school, so it's, it's both. So the students don't usually have cell phones that we've worked with, but, but the teachers do. You know, and they, they integrate that into the trainings, so. How are the parents involved in this project? Um, that's a good question. We, unfortunately, were not really able to send the cameras home, you know, because we have so few cameras. Um, so they don't necessarily get to interact with the, you know, that's a, a fun part about taking the camera home sort of instead of just, you saw in, in the pictures how the students work together to take a picture and there were you know lots of kids in the pictures or looking through the lens. That would happen with family, you know, if they took the cameras home but they don't. At the end we invite the families to the exhibit but you know, some come and some can't come. Um, I don't I don't know if the teachers have ever so pursued that but I mean for us that would be that'd be fine that'd be great I mean I that's sort of an ideal part of LTP here in Durham to have it be a way that um, you know sometimes for the parents to see the the student sort of doing the problem solving and being the one that's the directing photographs you know and kind of reverses the roles a little bit so I think at least 40 government schools, so I don't know about, I'm not sure how many private, because so many are so small, but um, yeah, we've at least 40 for the, for the government schools.
Mm -hmm. I'm curious to know if, um, like, when you're using it to teach anatomy, was that something that a kid just came up with, or was that an idea that was generated from an adult? Usually it would be the teacher that says, okay, yes, we want to collaborate. Here's what we're working on tomorrow or here's what we're working on this week, and then we try to think about what would be the way to use pictures in that. So, but the students um, are definitely the ones that are envisioning what it would look like, and in the, in the skeleton series, um, the idea was to think about common actions that we make with our bodies, so they did walking, writing, eating, hoeing, um, you know, there were probably 10 or 12, and so, you know, still the students are having to come up with that and then think about what exact moment, what action should I be doing precisely to represent that. So there's a lot of thinking, and, you know, and then they're the ones that draw, do the drawing. So, but the teacher, we try to go with what the teacher is interested in having us do. Otherwise, if, if we get to choose, <laughs> which sometimes we do, we like to do things like self-portraits or do the dream project, some stuff that we know the kids will immediately grab onto. I had a follow-up one. I think it was one where a bunch of children were together and made a house. Yeah. And that, I mean, the creativity and that yeah. made me smile. Yeah. And so was that also sort of something that the kids actually, they were creating the cow or they had a picture and then decided, oh, no, they were creating the cows. So that was that is a great example of using creativity. So I really love how you see so much creativity in the pictures, even when it's starting with the curriculum, you know, so starting with the required material. And um, in that case, it was the lesson was about animals in their environments. And so since they didn't have a cow right at the school, <laughs> they made the cow. Um, or the, the chickens, and then, you know, there's another one of like a, a dog in a cage, and just the way they frame it really interestingly. So, yeah, that was a great creative example. So they, they weren't working off a picture. They were working off of their imaginations. So, Can you tell us a little bit about the preparation of your students before they go to Tanzania and what that process is to get them ready to participate yeah, with you? That's a great question. Um, I teach a class that's an undergraduate class um, the semester beforehand that ideally all of those students are in. It hasn't worked out that way, but I mean, in 2012, for example, it was six of eight of the students that, that were in the class. So all semester, those students are learning about literacy through photography, learning about creativity and education, working with teachers like Denise or other teachers in Durham, and so getting very familiar with the methodology which will then be very different in Tanzania, but at least they have that, that basis. And so even the first week that we're in Tanzania, we might already be teaching teacher workshops. And so I'll usually lead the workshop, but the students will each be with a group of teachers and be there to reinforce things and work in small groups. And so they're, they're pretty well prepared, I, I think. Um, through the, through the hands-on experience, but also just having a lot of discussions about education. And um, they definitely study the work in Tanzania, too, beforehand, since we do have this great archive. And I have them read the, their fellow students' blog entries, so they're you know really learning about it from the Duke students' perspective, too. What is the course called? It's called Literacy Through Photography. And it's what department? It's Education, Doc Studies, and Visual Studies. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if there's any interaction between students, say, here who might have done this, a similar sort of project or students in other countries that have done a similar sort of project um, and, you know, maybe the, the use of this methodology in creating some international exchange. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention a couple things. One is something with Denise's class, and maybe you want to talk about it too, Denise. So um, Denise has done projects with the Swahili Proverbs too. And well, do you want to say something about it, Denise? <laughs> okay. Um, so the students, I've one one year I was able to come into Denise's classroom with third graders in Durham and tell tell them about some about show them some images from schools in Tanzania and they learned some Swahili words and learned about congas, which are the fabrics back there. And the students actually made congas. So. Um, 
but then they they learned about Swahili proverbs and what those mean because those are on the the congas that are a typical dress uh, or cloth. Um, so that was that was one example, and, and Denise has continued to do that on her own. Um, another example that I'm really interested in pursuing is is doing something. Um, next summer with um, that's that will be a collaboration about basically about the topic of slavery and so I've worked with um, another teacher in Durham on a project related to Stagville a, a plantation former plantation in Durham and one of the towns that that will teach at for a week this coming summer is a is also a town that had slave forts and so I'm interested in connecting students through that. So the students in both places will be learning about the slavery hi history in their in their towns and writing stories and making pictures. And I mean, my dream would be to like have the students interacting and skyping and you know learning from each other. I don't know if that's going to be coming into fruition because of technology concerns and everything. But yeah, so I love those kinds of things. I mean, I haven't had a lot of opportunity to follow up with exchanges, but um, it's definitely a great, a great thing to do. And if I had more time, I would do more of it. As you walk around and look at some of the pictures, you'll see Several of them talk about loving to dance. And I just thought this was kind of a theme. So we had a teacher who we were able to help get trained in Asheville and who has gone back now to a school in Arusha and is teaching dancing. It's a boys' school. And most of these who are talking about dancing are boys. And um, so we've now established a cyber exchange between Riverside High and the school where he teaches. And so they're able to exchange, you know, through Skype and DVDs, you know, ideas about what each culture is doing. But that's something we learned, you know, from this. So it was very beneficial in that regard. Did you have a question? Just one thing as you all walk around too, and uh, please don't forget to have something to eat from the refreshments that were brought by Tony. And Tony, would you tell us what you brought? Yeah, um, actually, I didn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, um, we have tea with milk. Anybody who has been in Arusha or Tanzania, you know, tea. Tea is like a uh, pop, yeah, uh, like uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola here. Yeah. So I brought tea and uh, samosa. Um, you know, we have, uh, Tanzania is, our cooking uh, influenced by the Indian, so we have a lot of spicing and a lot of cooking uh, uh, which resemble Indian. So, so I decided that you know uh, we should have a little taste. And the tea is grown in Tanzania. We have tea and coffee. So try and taste it. You know, sometimes the tea you're drinking here is from there, but you don't know. Samosas are just beef, and uh, the wrapping is uh, made from uh, 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 wheat or something. It's like a bread, you know, the way they do it. But uh, uh, the ladies who do this, they are experts. I just eat. <laughs> so I just wanted to say one more thing, too. Or I don't know if someone has a question, but I wanted to um, say at the, at the back table, there are some... Um, more stories that students have written. Um, the book that I mentioned, Book of Different Skills, on the left side of the table. On the right side of the table, there's some piles of things. So if there's more than one, you're welcome to take one. The things on the right, that's just my, my copy. Um, but I just wanted to say, again, thank you to Sister Cities, and especially to Dot, 
um, you weren't here when I first came in, but Dot, it was really her idea to bring the teachers to, to Tanzania or to Durham in the first place. So we had had a big exhibition um, in, in, of, of Durham work at the Center for Documentary Studies back in 2001. And Dot saw that and thought, wouldn't it be great to involve all of the sister cities in LTP? And so I just really wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for that. And thanks for all of the sister cities members for supporting it and the library for having me. Is this methodology um, in print anywhere? Yeah, there are there are um, a few books. Um, one one is um, called uh, "I Want to Take Me a Picture," and a new publication that came out in 2011 is called "Literacy and Justice Through Photography." Thank you, everyone. Oh, sorry. I, yes. I, 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 I want to say thank you to you have been absolutely incredible. You've taken the seed of something and, and, and made it grow and flower like we could not ever imagine. So well, thank we you. No, uh, we are in such gratitude to you. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Please do grab an, grab an evaluation on your way out. Walk around and look at the pictures and enjoy some of the refreshments. Thank you all. Let's thank our Would the Tanzanian committee come to the back so I can take a picture of y'all? I'd like to post a picture of the tea. <laughs> Thank you.